what I'm going to talk about is something that actually I was su quite surprised after uh, looking at all the agenda that we hadn't spoke about today yet. Uh, and that is one of the challenges that happens when people become sick. We've been talking about serious and chronic illness quite a bit. But uh, one of the problems that we discovered was this uh, problem of information, health information. So, and it's a problem everyone here probably has seen either in their own lives, their families, or have seen somebody else cope with. And that is what happens when they, they or somebody they care for becomes sick. And that's the information overflow. They, a, if somebody gets cancer, for instance, or diabetes, they become a web researcher. I call it a certified web researcher about their condition. A, and it used to be that it looked like this. You'd amass a lot of amount of information today. It's really just Google printouts. A, and there's endless. If you search for breast cancer, 285 million results. What if that is relevant for you? What if that is current? What if that is not somebody trying to sell you something? That's very difficult to discern. A e patient Dave, or Dave de Bronchite, he uh, used this chart to show, you know, there's the amount of information and there's the ideal there, someplace between confusion uh, and understanding. So basically, you're, we're getting way too much. It used to be that we were at this edge of the spectrum, right? You, it was difficult to find information. Today, we we're well on this side. So everybody's very confused from what they see. And people come to the doctor after they misdiagnose themselves and waste a lot of time with their doctor. Now, doctors don't have it easier. You know, they finish their education, and they go into practice, and they're required or expected to stay abreast of all the latest developments. But really, that's impossible. Because there's so many publications and journals every day. There's 5,000 published research in every area of specialty at least. In fact, the New York Times had this piece about healing the overwhelmed physician, getting to the conclusion that they need to spend their entire career just learning to stay abreast of what they need. They have to take apart these 5,000 research, hundreds of clinical trials, and figure out which of their patients each piece of information belongs to, or how to apply that. And that's really impossible to expect of them. And really, the most frustrating situation is when that patient comes in with these Google printouts, and their doctor needs to tell them that 95% of that is irrelevant, and they're wasting their time. That's really disheartening. And the, the problem is not small. Uh, in terms of size, we're talking about a 5,000 new diabetes diagnosis a day in the US. Same thing almost in cancer. In fact, 41% of people born today will have cancer. And I'm not talking about basal cell carcinoma, which is the most uh, common, probably, and most treatable. A, there are more than 133 million Americans with one or more chronic conditions. And this is taking 75% of the health care costs of the US. So it's a significant problem. So the question is, how should this be done correctly? Today, health information is generic. What would we, what would we do? to redefine that. And this is what we uh, thought about. First, we'll have to have, and I agree completely with uh, uh, Ziv, what's Ziv. Ziv. Uh, I agree completely. It has to be designed in a way that's suitable and intuitive for consumers. It has to be personalized state of the art. That's the first thing you want to know. You've gotten a diagnosis or you have a suspected diagnosis. You want to know what is the state of the art for me. You don't really care about breast ca cancer from a textbook. You want to know what it means for the person, the individual, for yourself. And from that point on, you want to stay abreast because science and medical science doesn't stay static. You may be living with a chronic condition for a long time. In fact, you'd like to live as long as you'd like, as, as long as you can, and at the highest quality of life. Research continues to get published, clinical trials take place, and you want to be at the cutting edge of science and understand that. So how do we do that? We try to combine uh, you know, patent pending technology uh, with expertise of doctors, uh, and, uh, some of which are in the room, and patients and caregivers. Why? Because the patients themselves are a very important source. So we'd like to infuse the wisdom of the crowd, just like Trito harnesses what's available from what people say about drugs, we'd like to uh, infuse the solution with the evidence from patients themselves. So we built this website, and uh, we have quite a bit of time. Uh, basically, it's a consumer portal where patients, caregivers, or doctors could come in, uh, sign up. You need to sign up because we need to fill in a rich profile. In order to be able to pinpoint and give you only the information that's relevant for your situation, it has to be 
uh, that we know en enough about the case. But we want to know the least amount that we can in order to give you meaningful information. So we ask the least amount of questions in a very smart way. Uh, so all the questions are uh, metadata driven with a conditional you know, structure that basically you answer only those things that will distinguish between you and another person. And then you'll start getting uh, all this cutting edge research. Now, the problem is the cutting edge research is published and designed for PhDs and doctors. We try to boil it down to you. We take it in a nutshell, the background, methods and findings. We write down the fine print. We show that there's any interactions between other research that's published. Uh, is it, is, was this sponsored by somebody? Does that conflict with their interests? We take the highest level of evidence. We try to interpret statistics in a lay language so people can understand from 10th grade English. And we, as I said, infuse it with the wisdom of the crowd. So piece, people basically tell us uh, if this was helpful. And that's just part of the ways that they interact. They could share with their doctor. They could do this on the go and the mobile. These are what we supported to support today. So we began with cancer, added diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and now infertility. The reaction, I'd largely given up on search for info on my own. I'm impressed with the conference. That's fantastic. They've not, people have not seen this before, and basically they love us. So, and that's if you check Twitter, you'll see all that all the time. These are nonprofit organizations that have endorsed us. These are places uh, that have raved about us in their reviews. And really, the key takeaway is: first of all, if you know, uh, you know, the future is personalized medicine. And when we have genomics, and when we have the medicine starting to completely affect the individual, you'll see that. Uh, and information can be personalized already today. And if you know somebody that has a serious or chronic condition, try it out. Let them know about it so they could try it themselves. Thank you.